Good morning. I don't know if you guys can notice, but there's something fresh on the Hilux. We got some new wheels on it. it wasn't on it last episode, um, but I'll run you through the details of these later because we actually have a few things we're going to be doing in the shed today. But I'm actually avoiding all my problems because I started something on the patrol that I wish I didn't start last night. Um, so instead, we loaded up the mountain bikes and now we're here at Glen Rock in Newcastle. So let's go for a ride and then let's deal with these cars later. That was what? That's you in 20 years. <laughs> Me in 20 years, you reckon? <laughs> nah, God, if I look that good and still move that good, I'll be smoked. So we're back home in the shed. The morning fun is over. I've cleaned and showered myself up, ready to crack in. The shed's a bit of a mess. We've got a bit going on. Josh's got all his bike stuff going on. He's prepping bikes for sale. I have some problems with the GU that we're gonna be working on today. And there's just a whole heap of stuff. But I've got a few new products I'm gonna run you guys through that'll be going on the N80 because that's what we were doing last episode. We went through Superior's cool conversion. We're gonna run through the things that we're gonna be installing today. I was recently in Queensland. On my way home, I actually stopped into Fat Bars. This is something I wanted to get onto the N80 ASAP just because of rock chips and stuff like that with general driving. I live on a dirt road, so that is something that is happening. And obviously I wanna start off-roading this vehicle soon and I definitely wasn't doing that without the seals being protected and picked up set of their sliders for the N80. We've got the adapted brackets to suit the core conversion. I actually got the infill panels. When I unwrap these later, we'll go into more details. Let's look at the GU. A couple things on the old girl. She, <laughs> so the problem I've got is light bars stopped working. So I thought I'll just, it's all right, we'll just chase some wiring and probably be a blown fuse, something easy. Never, it's never, it's never easy with the patrol. What we've got here is, I mean, I guess you could say it was a blown fuse. Not really though. The fuse is completely melted. She's, um, not in the best condition. I need to preface this by saying for the fact that I am not an auto -like. <laughs> Wiring is something that is very new to me. Honestly, wouldn't really be confident saying I know the basics, but with the light bars, it's fairly simple. You can chase back the harness and sort of figure out where everything goes. Let me just show you what we're working with so you can understand. All these little joins that are maybe considered a little bit dodgy. <laughs> As you can see, some cut wires and stuff here. That's just a mess. So I'm literally just gonna untape all this, figure out what all this wiring is, pull it out because obviously it's not being used. And then I'm gonna chase that back into the cab. I have no idea how to do wiring. I have an idea on how it works. Take my time, figure it out, and then try and fix it the best I can with the tools I have. Essentially, I feel like the only way to learn is by having a crack. I know that I'm not fully educated, so the chances are I'm probably not doing something the best way. I'm going to try and do it my best with the education I do have and the tools that I have. But essentially what this is about is me documenting it so I can learn. If I make a mistake, I'll tell you about it so you guys don't make the same mistake. And if I learn something the correct way or the right way, or I'm educated on something, I want to share that with you guys as well so then you guys can learn. And just so you know, I'm scared because I'm scared of making mistakes. I'm scared of stuffing it up. But like I've said a thousand times, the only way to learn is just by having go. So that's what I'm gonna do. Update, it is now seven o'clock at night and the patrol looks like this. I have this new thing with wiring that I take it too far and that's the reason the GQ looks like this. Just a little sneak peek into this car. I've completely pretty much stripped it to deal with that. So as you can see, every time I get into wiring, I take it a little too far. But I'm gonna try and stop myself with the GU. Um, so I chased everything to the light bar, back to the switch panel and everything was just not great. Figured everything out, but I'm gonna have to go back into Audubon tomorrow and I wanna buy like a, I think they call it a fuse block. I don't know if they've got an actual name that I can run all my accessories to, to the one point. So yeah, that's turned into a tomorrow job because I now need more parts and I took it way further than just adding a new loom for the light bar. I'm now rewiring everything that's an accessory in the cab. 
But yeah, so now it's going to crack into the N80 because I can't go any further with the GU until I get more parts. <laughs> All right, so like I said earlier, I just dropped into fat bars and picked up these sliders, this, uh, the infield ones. On my GU, I don't have infield sliders, but it's the GU and I don't really care about it as much. Um, but we were wary of stone chips and stuff. Having the infield panel in the sliders is gonna help protect that. And we did get these adapter because obviously I got the coil conversion in the back of this ute, so we did have to change the rear mount to suit that. But otherwise, we're gonna chuck these on. Have to go back. I can't go any further forward. As if. Just because um, Josh looks so comfortable, I thought him, I'd get him to hold it and show you guys the issue we've just come across. Um, this slides over the chassis, bolts on top, but with the superior bash plate, it uses the OEM, OEM hole in the chassis here, and we can't put the bracket up. Um, so it turns out the superior plates aren't compatible with the fat bar sliders. Okay, well, do you want to put this back down? I thought you looked really comfy. All right, it is now 10.55. It was meant to just be a quick day in the shed, fixing light bars and fitting sliders. Turned into a long day. <laughs> so we sorted the issue with the superior bash plate. It's just gonna have to overlap and it's gonna sit on top of one of the brackets, the front bracket. I've just spaced it out a little bit. Got it back on. It's just obviously not sitting flush because it's half sitting on the slider bracket, but that is fine. Now, installation tips. <laughs> Do the passenger side first because that is the headache side because you have all your hard line and your brake lines running along the chassis. It just makes it harder to get the bolts in. Um, they are like to the mill with fitment. So we did have to use a jack to sort of leverage the side up because we found that it sort of sat crooked sometimes so you have to get the jack under it to sort of even it out to get the bolts to line up properly and stuff like that so just some tips if you're doing it at home on the ground if you have a jack get it ready because it just makes it way easier obviously if you're doing it on your own having a jack just to hold it in place where you get the bolts is easy but to be able to leverage and move the mounts because like I said they're to the mill so it's sometimes you're going to have to play around with it a little bit to get the bolts to line up properly um, but other than that they're all on, they're ready to go. Went with the fat bars angled sliders, so these sit up a little bit and they're just tucked into the body a bit nicer as well with the uh, infill panels as well. But other than that, they're on and I'm ready for bed. So see you guys in the morning, hopefully fix the GU. All right, so today I'm getting this thing done. You guys are probably just like, why is this taking you so long? One, I've been educating myself through the process. Uh, two, I've been staring at wires, chasing them, trying to understand what the hell is going on. Essentially, I just had no idea. So this has been like literally hours of just staring at stuff, trying to understand it and figure it out before I actually got in there and actually started pulling stuff out, cutting things, reattaching, all that kind of jazz. But today, we're getting this done because I'm sick of it. And I've pretty much gone in and tidied up everything I need to. I haven't gone as far as I would have liked, um, but that's just because I'm getting a bit nervous that I don't I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to drop the gun too much considering I'm still pretty new at this. We're going to get the fuse block in. What I'm going to do is something you might find really stupid, but just because I've never done it before is I'm going to make this whole loom out of the car, test it all, and then I'll put it in. So let's get into that. Josh is clearly not a fan. Orange sucks. 
Anyway, as you can see, there's an empty bay where the hoist is, which is where the GU was, and it's out, it's done. I literally just got in the shed and I tried to crack in to get it done because I honestly spent so many days on that car, way longer than it should have, but definitely learned something new this month, which I'm glad that I did it um, and it's working. Now, I am not gonna say do what I did. I don't know if it's 100 correct. I obviously know with my research that there's definitely multiple ways that I could have run that setup. Um, it's definitely better than it was, and that's what matters. If I'm honest, if I had to go back and start again, I would do it completely different. Now that I've done my research, and I sort of research started to evolve as I went through the process, so it was kind of hard to, I changed the plan so much, but to keep changing, I just had to call it at some point, just so I could try and get it done. If I was to do it again, I'm gonna, I would, I am going to do it again at some point. I'm, I'm gonna need a few months break after that, but I will upgrade the switch panel itself. I definitely would look into changing it up again and because I definitely tidied a lot of things up, but there's a few things in there that could still be pulled out or rearranged and changed. I've already spent four days on this thing. I don't want to spend any more. Lights are working. It's ready to go away on the weekend, so I made the time crunch. So yeah, like, I'm definitely glad I had a crack. I definitely learned some things. I have set the foundations of, not solid foundations, but a foundation of where to start when it comes to electrical. And I can definitely expand from what I've learned over these last couple of days. So it's not gonna be the end of that We're rewiring process on the GU, but that's fine. And it's definitely not the end of this episode because we're going wheeling. Hey, um, those things are brand new. Can you, can you stop scratching <laughs> wheels, please? What are they meant for? Tire shine's not going to fix the scratches. That's right, memory. Um, so we're doing a bunch of side trails. The goal is to complete monkey gum today. We actually have a huge convoy, eight cars. So that will be interesting to see how far we get and how quickly we get through it. But we're warming up on a couple other tracks. Don't know what they're called. I haven't been to Yavel in years. I've been there once. And I've never actually done it in the patrol. And I come as a passenger years ago. So I'm excited to actually drive monkey gun for the first time in my very own car. Actually, you know one thing I love? So many female drivers. We've got Gemma in the 79, Amber in the 105. Demi, yep. Demi's meant to be in an 80, but um, she had some troubles on the way down and unfortunately, I'm gonna ask her about it, she's pretty touchy. Hey, um. Go on, what's your next question? Go on. Why have you got a camera in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> it smells like defense. Anyway, we're gonna keep pushing on and get to monkey gum. There's something in front of us that they're all fussing about. So I'm gonna get out and go have a look and see what we've got next. What's going on? You weirdos in four wheelers can't get a copy, so. We're stuck here. Wow. Ooh. Yep, it's I'm changed. Sure. <laughs> I reckon if we just like straddle that tree round this time. No. Chicken track. Just push it in. It's soft like everyone going round, eh? <laughs> All the responsible people have taken the new track that's been formed, but of course, the big GU wants to open up the original, so doing some packing. I think this is the most packing I've ever seen in my life. And we'll see if we can get it through because we had the 80 come through first, and it actually, if you look behind me, skull dragged that tree out. So we'll see if we can get through us. <laughs> yeah, that's good line, man. That's good. Nice and slow. A little bit of right, just a little bit of right, a little bit of right. That's it, like that. Yeah, you're. Oh, look at that. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, good. So come towards the tree. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Otherwise, you're going to hit the log. Yep. Yeah. Just crawl. Just crawl. Just touching the log on the left of the tire, but it, nice and slow. Oh, he's got the tire underneath, so... Oh, yeah, that's right. It's got a tape, mate. What's our size? Forties? Eh? Yeah, forties. Yeah. Just for reference, everyone, that was... Forties. Straight on that. Gonna come down. Straight on that. Guys, 
<laughs> yeah, slowly, just slow, slow, slow. You won't go far. Yeah, yeah. well done. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> These Jeeps are giving it more of a crack than the rest of these cars are. Do you reckon we build one? Should have bought a Jeep. Should have bought a Jeep. That was actually probably the cleanest and softest model I could possibly have. We need a boat. <laughs> or a bigger boat. Do you reckon it would have anchored it down? Wait, okay. um, should I drive that? Nah. Oh. Sure, send it. I was thinking about it. I was just gonna try and straddle it and see if I can grip that wall. Wait, Bree! Hmm? Are you driving this one? I was thinking about it. I've got no front. Wait, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a long time ago on the Toronto when we did the budget build series up in Cape but that was easy because it was a car you didn't really care about this thing I kind of care about a bit more so here's my little warm-up we'll see how it goes hopefully it'll give me the confidence to do the real thing one day oh, are you? Jesus Christ Yeah. You leave some track for everyone else? Nah, just like doing it for everyone else, clearing it out. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's made for it. DH Trent, it's a clean cruiser too. <laughs> <laughs> clean <laughs> cruiser, <laughs> mate. Nah, stuck. Clearing okay. defects. Clearing defects, mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That tint looks a little dark there, darling. You might get a defect. Ah, 
we were so close. I think we only have one more section. I can't even see what the time is. Quarter past five. The sun has... It's pretty much down. Alright, let's do another bead. This is what you're waiting for. I think we're ready to ride. Yeah, it's definitely a bolt I've seen in my car before. Just Josh finding that on the driveway. <laughs> Look, we'll find out when something breaks. Hey Google. <laughs> What's the closest auto electrician's number? You just like dummy run this and just hope the car doesn't blow up. Okay, so we've set up this little dodgy thing. What are you sitting back for? Because <laughs> we should have safety glasses on. 